Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, giving you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Today, we're gonna to take a look at townhome living in Westfield, Indiana. We're gonna start off with a tour of a three bedroom, two and a half bath uh, townhome here at Countryside uh, Community. Countryside is one of the largest and one of the most popular uh, neighborhoods in all of Westfield. Okay, we're at 250 Strong Lane. This one is listed by FC Tucker, but FYI, I can help you with any uh, home in the state, regardless of whether it's listed by myself or somebody else. Hey, let's go inside and see what we've got. Okay, step inside and you've got this lower level uh, family room type area. I've seen pool tables down here, offices, any number of different things kids play room, but more often a workout room or game room or, or office. Um, it's pretty decent size. You could even uh, multi-purpose it with or multitask it with a couple different uh, options there. It's got a nice uh, walk-in closet, so you could even make it a bedroom, I guess, if uh, you wanted to get creative and maybe put up a wall there. It's got a full bath with a walk-in shower. You've got uh, some storage under the stairs. They've got the water uh, softener hooked up in there. You've got your laundry room and utilities here, uh, uh, water heater and furnace. And uh, couldn't find a light in here, but you do have a two car garage that uh, accesses from the other side. Okay, let's go upstairs, see what we've got. We got some decent woodwork, carpeted stairs. Looks like we've got carpet through most of this. Uh, lots of nice windows here for natural light. And it's got a pretty good size feel to it. The open stairwell uh, aids with that. You got the wide crown molding at the top, which is attractive six panel doors. This would be your dining area. Easily fit a six or an eight top in here. No problem. Looks like maybe a deep coat closet with some storage behind it. Got a powder room. Another closet, but from your uh, main living area here, your dining room, and now you have a, um, oh, we call this one the uh, morning room or the cocktail hour room, one of the two. But uh, you come in here and you can stand at this island and gives you a good view of this. You can see into the dining room, sort of. It's not totally open. You do have a wood-burning fireplace. Uh, it's hooked, set up for TV above it but uh, makes for a nice gathering room, especially if you're entertaining. Um, kitchen wise, you do have an overhang on the island, so you can put some stools there. You have stainless steel appliances, side-by-side -side refrigerator, microwave, double oven, and the dishwasher. Countertops are Formica. These are not soft clothes by any means. You do have a gas cooktop, which is nice. Tile backsplash. Pantry. And you got a little balcony out here. Put a couple lawn chairs. Look out over the uh, green space behind it. Now, we'll point out that right behind us here is a shopping center. Um, you've got a Kroger grocery store. You have a number of restaurants and then all, you know, there's a fitness center and a bank and just all the type of stuff that you would need to kind of carry on in everyday life, cleaners and I don't know, lot, lots of different stores in there and enough of them that uh, you could walk over and um, get a sandwich or a pint and uh, you wouldn't have to go very far. So, cool. Okay, let's go up and uh, see what we've got in the rest of the house. I don't know if that lights out or what, but I could not figure it out. Apologize to you. Okay, so we've got a hall linen closet, a bathroom for uh, the two smaller bedrooms, 
of which this is one. You'll note though that it does have vaulted ceiling which gives it uh, a bigger feel. Decent sized closet. Okay. Next door is the other one. This one seems a little smaller. Does have two windows and the vaulted ceiling, which does help. Decent sized closet again. All the paint and everything in here is in really good condition. Now we're into the master. It is pretty decent size. It too has the uh, vaulted ceiling. People always ask me, what do you put up there? I say, well, I've seen big pottery vases. I've seen stuffed animals. I've seen plants. Um, that's probably the most common, I guess. Okay, so it's got its own private bath, dual vanity. It's got both the walk-in shower and a soaker tub and lots of natural light. So pretty decent bathroom. I imagine a lot of people would paint these cabinets. Um, it is not as big a deal as people fear that it is. And I've heard people, uh, people on video say, oh, it's gonna be, you know, $5,000 to paint your cabinets. I don't know. I get mine done for under $500, so, um, and they're still going strong. So don't fret that as much as, uh, or take that fear from, from people to that degree. If you wanna paint your cabinets, you can get it done. I know a guy. And hey, that brings up a point. You know, um, I do know a lot of good contractors. They're a reasonable price. They do good work. They're reliable people. They've helped myself, my family, and dozens and dozens of my clients. And so if there's a house that uh, you like, but it's not quite right, well, hey, uh, they can go in and do the things that you want done to make it the way you want it before you even move in. And uh, then you got that kind of new home feel, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, back to the tour. Uh, this is the master bedroom closet. It's got some built-ins, very nice. Okay, I think we've caught everything up here. And you know, talking about contractors, one of the things in my background is I was a contractor. And so I can walk through a property and talk with you intelligently about moving walls or um, all sorts of different things, whether a foundation is truly a problem or not and roof situations and just all sorts of different things. I've got really deep experience in all of that. Okay, so we've got a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,328 square feet. This was built in 2005. It is listed by FC Tucker, but I can help you with any uh, property in the state, regardless of who it's listed with. And uh, this one has got a ticket on it of 324,900. The uh, amenity package on it is, or the HOA dues are $140 a month, but it has a heck of an amenity package. Uh, the countryside um, uh, community just has, well, we'll show you here in just a second, but I mean, it's got a pool and a clubhouse and soccer fields and ponds and oh, ball courts and just, it, it is really well done. So uh, stay tuned. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Okay, we've moved along. We're in the Lancaster community. This has been built by Pulte Homes. Uh, we're gonna take a look at an end unit, which a lot of people like, uh, because you don't have people on, or you only have people on one side, okay? This is a uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath. We've got an address of 712 Axford Bay Drive. This one is listed by EXP Realty. And uh, as always, I can help you with any house that's listed in the state, regardless of who it's listed with. Um, this one's been on the market for 48 days and uh, we're gonna go take a look at it. This one's a little bit different than some uh, that we look at. You'll see why in just a minute. Step inside, you have a small foyer with the steps leading straight up, uh, kind of winds around here. To your right, you've got a powder room, and then you're into your main living space. Now, note this, 
This is fully furnished. So everything you see here pretty much stays here. Um, nice big island. Four, uh, three stools on the other side, but could be four. Living room's got quite a bit of furniture in it. Um, and like I said, it's all included. It's got a six top uh, dining room table. Granite top even. You've got luxury vinyl plank here on through this area and carpet under your living room space. You got granite countertops. Um, these are not soft clothes. You have stainless steel appliances. You have the French door refrigerator. You have a gas range and oven. The dishwasher tucked under next to the sink and uh, the microwave. These are all Whirlpool appliances, by the way. Got a pantry and a coat closet with a boot bench right here from the garage. Two car garage. It's got a water softener in here. It's not a real deep garage nor a real wide garage, but it is a two car garage. You gotta like the boot bench. Take your mittens and boots off and book bags and all those things. Okay. Outside, you have a nice view of the pond. You've got a small patio here. And then, like I said, nice view of the pond. So you don't have anybody behind you, really. Okay, let's go see what the, the upstairs has. This closet has your uh, mechanicals in it. Programmable thermostat. Nice wide stairway. You can get those king-size mattresses up here without uh, killing yourself, maybe, or only half killing yourself. Carpeted stairways to cut down the noise. Hey, we got a big linen closet. Double vanity, granite tops. Tub and shower. Separate door there, so you can close that door and somebody else can be here. Got bedroom number two. Not the largest, but uh, you can get everything in here. You can put chest of drawers here. And I'd say the same story here. This one's pretty much the same size. But you could get a chest of drawer in and you have your two uh, nightstands. Decent sized master, window, natural light. See what your clothes look like. Wind our way back around. Got the laundry room up here, a lot of people like. Another linen closet. A lot of closets. Okay, we're into the uh, master bedroom. Pretty decent size. Nice view from here. Yeah, plenty of room for your furniture. Decent walk-in closet. And the master bathroom. Okay, so you have dual sinks, granite countertop. Gotta like this great big shower. Nicely tiled, seat. Yeah, gotta like that. Water closet, linen closet. So, Shower makes it, right? That's nice too. Okay, so nice master ensuite. So what we have here is uh, 1,896 square feet. It's only two years old or two and a half years old. Um, listed by EXP Realty. The ticket on this one is 349,800. Maybe you heard uh, Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country and uh, good houses can go fast. So if you see something that you like, if you see a sign or you see an ad, uh, you wanna look at a house, just give me a quick call or text. I'll do my best to take good care of you. Hey, if you have a home to sell, you're gonna to wanna to check out this next section of our video because uh, it's guaranteed to make you money. 
And if you don't have a home to sell, well, hey, feel free to skip ahead. We're gonna do a tour of the area of Westfield, Indiana, and all the amazing amenities that it has to offer. Stay tuned either way. Okay, if you're undecided about whether you need to buy or sell first, this is not my first rodeo. I'll be glad to talk and share the pros and cons of going one direction or the other, and then you can be the judge for your own self about what works best for your own personal situation. By the way, we offer a free room-by-room -room analysis. There's no cost and there's no obligation. And I guarantee you that I can help make you money and I can help save you money. My staff and I prepared a short video film about this. It highlights 13 key points that you'll wanna pay attention to because they'll help you sell your home for more money. Plus, I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Hey there, over the years I've worn lots of hats in the real estate industry. So today I'm gonna to share in this video what they were, what I've done, and most importantly, how that can benefit you. Hey, I bought my first house while I was still in college. So yes, I've been a first time home buyer. And if you are a first time home buyer, I know what that feels like and I've made systems that help so that you come to learn what is going to happen next so that it takes some of that anxiety out of the whole transaction and makes it a lot more enjoyable experience. Hey, six months later, I bought my first duplex and fixed it up. What a learning curve that was. I can remember we were in the kitchen and we were uh, hooking up the gas range. This is the first time I'd ever done this, okay? And all of a sudden we had flames and my buddy grabs a bucket of really nasty water that we'd use to clean the floor and he throws it over on me and oh God. Now, hey, these years later, I, I ran the uh, gas lines for my entire house and for my barn put in the furnace, water heaters, everything, okay? So I learn something new every day and I still do. That work led to being a contractor. You know, we were those guys that had uh, the sign on their truck, you know, like no job too big or too small. The biggest job we ever did was we uh, rehabbed a 42 unit apartment project. I mean, we didn't take it to the studs, but it was pretty darn close. The most interesting job we ever did was we lifted a house up off the foundation tore out the basement walls, then relayed all the basement walls and set the house back down on the foundation. Hey, because of that kind of experience, I can walk through a house with you and I can point out opportunities and I can answer your questions about, can we open up this wall or can we, whatever the case might be. Hey, and when it's all said and done, I know a guy that can do all those things that you might want done. And you know what? They do good work, they're reliable, and they're affordable. The next hat I wore was property manager. It had something like 500 tenants I was responsible for. And so today I'm an affiliate, or my company is an affiliate of the Key Renter Indianapolis North franchise. And so we can help you with all of your property management needs if you're wanting to buy a house for an investment purpose. This led to me being a builder of single family homes, apartments, condominiums, so when it comes to new construction, it wouldn't be my first rodeo, which means to you, I can be a difference maker for your benefit. Too many people have bad experiences with builders. I can put my experience to work for you, facilitating successful outcomes with new construction homes. It was kind of a natural outgrowth from builder to developer, and I oversaw the engineering and the state highway cuts and putting down new streets and sewer lines and water lines, building in all kinds of weather, all kinds of building sites. Remember one down in Brown County, we were literally hanging off the hillside, uh, putting up uh, siding in about 40 uh, mile an hour winds. Wasn't a lot of fun, but we got it done. Hey, I've also done planning and zoning work is my development process, and I do that for clients now. And that's something that can come in real handy when people are buying ground or want to build their own house on their own piece of ground. I did a little work way back in the day as a home inspector, which means to you I can drill down into the reports and I can work for the best outcome for you under the circumstances. For several years, I was an appraiser, conventional FHA, VA. Again, I know the drill. I know how to read the report and I know what can be done about it, which means to you have a greater likelihood of the deal closing. For 17 years, I was a mortgage lender. In fact, I grew a mortgage broker to become the second largest mortgage broker in the state that year. I know the ropes and can at times make you aware of opportunities that will literally make dreams possible in your specific situation. As a mortgage lender, one of my specialties was construction lending, including rehab financing. I can help turn a house with good bones into the home you want 
before you even move into it. Or I can help you to build your dream home on your own piece of ground. About 15 years ago, I worked as a commercial real estate due diligence inspector across the United States and Canada for the great uh, large Wall Street banks and investment firms. I worked all the way from Calgary to Charleston and from Toronto to Biloxi. Um, I did about 500 properties a year and this was everything from multifamily apartment projects to factories, huge distribution centers, grocery stores, restaurants, hospitals, doctor's offices, retirement homes, high-rise office buildings. Hey, I got those assignments because I could walk into any market in the entire continent and come up with recommendations for these large investment firms uh, so that they could get the best value out of their properties. So, hey, if they trusted me to do that, I hope you will trust me with your situation too. Throughout my entire career, just about, I've been a licensed realtor, both here and in, and in Colorado. And I've worn a lot of hats. In fact, it's hard to find a realtor who has the depth of experience that I do. All in all, I've played a role in something like 5,000 successful transactions, which means to you, you have a high likelihood you will achieve success. So before you sign on with your brother-in-law's third cousin, because she's family, Consider if you really want to put the uh, largest financial transaction of your life in the hands of, well, your brother-in-law's third cousin who just got their license. Bottom line, there are good reasons why 50% of my business is repeat business and another 25% is referral. My clients tell me I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. The city of Westfield has a lot to offer. Many amenities, not only in its own boundaries, but also in the surrounding area. Westfield is the northernmost suburb of Indianapolis. It sits at the top of Hamilton County, which is the wealthiest county in the state. Highway 31 runs right down the center of it. That's probably the, about the busiest highway in the state other than the interstates. It's about 10 minutes down to Carmel, about the same to 465, which is the beltway that runs around the uh, city of Indianapolis and will take you anywhere you wanna go in the metro area. It's about 20 miles to the downtown circle. That's uh, a, probably about a 45 minute drive. Not that you're probably gonna have a whole lot of need to go all the way downtown unless you're going to a Colts game or a Pacers game or out to eat someplace or something like that. Now, State Road 32 runs east and west, kind of cuts through the middle of the city because the city itself is about a seven by seven mile square and you have roads running about every mile north and south and east and west. But 31 and 32 are your key travel routes. Now let's talk jobs. Westfield is largely a bedroom community. Most people work outside of Westfield, either in Carmel or down along the Beltway. But there are some jobs in the schools, in the, a limited number in manufacturing, and then just in your basic services. Okay, let's talk schools. There's six elementary schools, an intermediate, and a middle school, and a high school. Neat thing about the high school, it's got an enrollment of 2,400, which is considerably smaller than most of its neighbors. And some people just might like that a great deal. Now the system is rated A plus by niche.com. It is ranked number six out of 290 public school systems in the state. That puts it in the top 2%, which is just crazy good. It is also home to Guerin Catholic High School with an enrollment of about 800 students. And it is ranked in the top 5% of all Catholic high schools in the United States year in and year out. So you have two great options for where to send your kids to school. Moving on, let's talk uh, hospitals and medical care. There's a Riverview Hospital basically at the junction of uh, highways 31 and 32. There are many exceptional hospitals located about 15 minutes south in Carmel. These are right on 31. They are, uh, include the IU Health System, uh, Ascension St. Vincent, and the uh, Riley's Children's Hospital. Surrounding those are many specialty hospitals like Heart Hospital, Oncology, Women's Hospital, um, Cardiovascular, and there are many, many ancillary medical buildings surrounding these hospitals. There are tons of healthcare opportunities to satisfy all your needs about 15 minutes south of the main part of Westfield. There is a lot to do in Westfield. The city and the organizations have put together a full schedule of events. And I'm gonna take you on a tour of a few of the major ones a little bit later in this video. And any discussion of Westfield has to begin with Grand Park. 
Stay tuned to get the full scoop, but there's more to Westfield. Looking at Parks and Rec, there's 12 parks with playgrounds, splash pads, disc golf, a skate park, picnic tables, shelters, gazebos, and 94 miles of trails, even an equestrian trail. Now, when it comes to golf, there's only one public course. So you either have to join a country club or go to nearby Carmel or Noblesville, which has many good options for golf. Music lovers have it better off. Cool Creek Park offers six concerts during the summer, and there's the new Jam at the Junction, which has a concert every Friday night during the summer. Connor Prairie is not too far off. It seats 8,000 people and has 12 concerts during the summer, which are very well attended, and everybody has a good time. We're gonna visit there, and we're also gonna stick our head in the door at Ruoff Music Center. Now, Ruoff is not in Westfield, but it is well, maybe about 30 minute drive away. And uh, it is the gem when it comes to music in the state of Indiana. In 2018, it sold more tickets than any other music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, it is in the top five of ticket sales worldwide. So be sure to stay tuned to see what's going on there. Okay, when it comes to shopping, along State Road 32 to the east are strip centers. To the west, you've got uh, the development of big box stores. And if you go south, right on the border with Carmel, you've got Greyhound Pass. And there are a lot of big box stores, not to mention a lot of other stores. And then right across the street in Carmel is the Clay Terrace, which is an open air mall with even more stores. So there is plenty of shopping opportunity for people that live in Westfield. Okay, let's talk restaurants. Park Street has a number that come very highly recommended. My favorite is the Italian house. You're gonna to need to get a reservation probably about two weeks in advance. It's that good. Now there are a number of uh, brew pubs and wine bistros that get quite a bit of attention, but my other fave is Grindstone on the Monon. Be sure to get the pickle brine chicken sandwich. Sounds kind of odd, but it's really pretty darn good. Now, if you'd like to learn everything there is to know about Westfield, Indiana, or to walk through a home you've seen advertised, just text me or book a call. Okay, let's jump in the ride and go take a look at these world famous attractions. Let's talk the Grand Park Sports Complex in Westfield, Indiana. Evidently, the city fathers had seen the movie Field of Dreams starring Kevin Costner, where he said, if we build it, they will come. Actually, he didn't quite say that, but I'm gonna paraphrase it since that's how it's usually paraphrased anyways. If we build it, they will come. So in 2007, the City Fathers came up with this idea and envisioned Grand Park. Seven years later in 2014, Grand Park opened and it continues to grow. There are 400 plus acres. There are 31 sports fields, 26 ball diamonds. There are three super large indoor facilities and that's just for starters. You put that all together and it makes for one of the 10 largest sports complexes in the country. Let me repeat that, one of the 10 largest sports complexes in the country. It is the home of the NFL's Indianapolis Colts training camp and it's a host of untold number of youth and adult sports competitions. Not to mention leagues and camps and it draws athletes and their families from all over the country. It attracts somewhere between one and two million people to the complex and to the city of Westfield. That brings in millions of dollars to the local economy and it makes Westfield a very busy place, especially during the summer months. The Grand Park Sports Complex is truly a grand park. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year-round. They have a variety of activities uh, including hot air balloons and uh, oh, the, what is this, uh, 150 or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately it's February and we're not going to get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie and the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, 
Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And hey, it's a good time. It really is. I know people that have like tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most. But uh, hey, I have a busy summer, so. But hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with. Uh, the cream de la cream, uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now, it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here, but at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. You've got to, you've got to think about this. This seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music, all-star lineup. You can get a season pass even. And uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world. In fact, in 2018, Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, they're in the top five. I mean, just crazy. Now, if you get the uh, Premier or the Legends Pass, uh, parking passes, you can pull right up to the turnstiles. You can tailgate, you can walk right in. And then uh, at the end of the night, you don't have to sneak out early. You can stay till the very end. You catch the encore, you walk out. It's five minutes to get out of the parking lot. And you're another, what, two, three, five minutes home? Hey, it's a great time. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. Housing numbers are in for the month of March 2024. So what do we have for Hamilton County and the greater central Indiana area? Both uh, close sales and listings picked up speed coming off the winter months, but closings were down 15% and listings down 8% in Hamilton County from a year ago. This was less true throughout central Indiana as a whole, but regardless, inventory is still tight. Good houses that are priced right are now selling within about a seven to 10 day range. But the overall average is like five to six weeks, which means it sure helps if your house is in good condition in a good location and priced right. The median price in central Indiana is now 293,000. And in Hamilton County, that number is 426. And final prices settled at just like one to 2% less than asking price. Hey, so what does that all mean for you? Number one, Prices are holding steady. Number two, lenders are reporting that more buyers have come in for pre-qualifications than they have for many months. Number three, my phone tells me that things are changing. It's been blowing up the last 10 days. And number four, we had a new listing last weekend. They had 19 lookers the first weekend and eight offers over list. Hey, the market is back in full swing. If I can be a service, be sure to give me a quick call or text. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you'd like to know everything there is to know about moving to or living in the greater Indianapolis area, then be sure to tune in every Tuesday as we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. Then on Thursday, we walk through existing homes for sale. And then on the weekend, we take a look at what it's like to actually live in Indiana. Now keep in mind, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this helpful, you'll love this next video. Watch this one right now.